If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we're going to do after reading the question is draw a picture of the scenario. So we have a charge that we've labeled Q1 equaling 50 microcoulombs that's located 3 centimeters from the origin on the y-axis and the other charge we've labeled Q2 which has a charge of 77 microcoulombs and is 4 centimeters away from the origin and at the origin we have placed the electron. Now in order to calculate the acceleration acting on that electron we're going to first have to calculate the force acting on the electron and the force is dictated by Coulomb's law. Now in Coulomb's law we know that the electric force is equal to a constant times the magnitude of the charges divided by a distance squared. In this problem we're going to actually apply that formula twice. Once for the force between these two charges and then a second time for the force between these two charges. So we'll start with the force that's acting between these two charges. Notice that because this charge is positive and the electron is negative that there will be an attractive force acting between those two particles. So what that means is that the electron is going to be pulled upward, attracted towards the charge that we have labeled Q1. So maybe we could label this force F1 and we're going to come over here and calculate F1 by plugging in a constant the magnitude of charge on Q1, the magnitude of charge on the electron, and then the distance between them. Note that the distance needs to be converted into meters. Also note that the charge needs to be converted into coulombs by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 6. So we've gone ahead and plugged in K, the 50 microcoulombs. Again, we converted it into coulombs. Note that the charge on an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, and then we divided by the distance squared, and that distance was put into meters. So we'll pick up our calculators and process this. And when we do that, we can see that force 1 is approximately 8 times 10 to the minus 11th newtons. So that's going to be this attractive force that's pulling the electron upward. We must also recall that there is an attractive force that's pulling the electron to the right, and that's because of the presence of the other charge, Q2. We can call that attractive force F2, and we're going to calculate it using it Coulomb's law again. So we've gone ahead and plugged in all the known values to calculate force F2. We have the constant. This time we're using 77 microcoulombs because that's the charge on Q2. We have the same charge in the electron and then the distance in meters. So when we calculate this force, we can see that it equals approximately 6.92 times 10 to the minus 11th newtons. Now, to get the total force, we're going to actually have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Notice that the force F2 is pointing to the right, and the force F1 is pointing straight up on the electron. To get the resultant force, we're going to actually need to calculate this hypotenuse right here. We can call that R, and then we're just going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So... When we use the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to end up with this result, and we'll plug in for F1 and F2 the values that we had just found. And when you do that carefully on your calculator, you should get a resultant force of approximately 1.06 times 10 to the minus 10 newtons. Now, that's the resultant force acting on the electron. We need the acceleration. And to calculate that, we just recall that acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass of the electron. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the net force that we just determined and then the mass of the electron. And when we calculate that the acceleration magnitude turns out to be rather large 1.16 times 10 to the 20th and that would be in meters per second squared. So there's the magnitude of the acceleration. If we needed the direction then we could just refer back to the triangle that we had developed earlier when we had F2 and F1 and then we had drawn the resultant and it turns out we can find that angle rather easily by noting that it would be the inverse tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we'll go ahead and plug that into our calculator and we get an angle of approximately 49.1 degrees. So this would be the direction, you could say it's 49.1 degrees above the positive x-axis. And that would indeed be the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click that thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.